Achilles tendinopathy and retrocalcaneal bursitis. These two entities are very common when back of the heel is paining, whereas plantar fasciitis will be considered more commonly if the pain is felt under the heel. Clinically, we very commonly encounter a Hagland deformity. This is this deformity is a bony enlargement formed at the posterior and superior aspect of the calcaneum. This deformity leads to retrocalcaneal bursitis, which can uh, lead to loss of fat planes. Then Hagland syndrome will say when the painful condition of the heel caused by mechanically induced inflammation of the retrocalcaneal bursa, retro, uh, supracalcaneal bursa, and Achilles tendon. So, if all the three things are present, then we will say this is a Hagland syndrome. For diagnosis and treatment, ultrasound remains a very useful modality because there can be multiple pain generators which can present with the same symptom. Achilles tendon can be presenting with the tendinosis or tendinitis or tendon tear, whereas it can be associated with uh, retrocalcaneal bursitis or supracalcaneal uh, bursa inflammation or it may not be there also. So what are the common ultrasound finding of Achilles tendinopathy? Firstly, there can be a fusiform swelling of the tendon. It can be 1 to 2 cm proximal from the insertion. Secondly, there can be heterogeneous ecostructure uh, with uh, diffuse or focal hypoechogenicity within the hyperechoic fibrillar structure. And thirdly, we can see neovascularization under color Doppler if it is an acute case of tendinitis. As far as treatment is concerned, we have two options. In the literature, there are multiple other options mentioned. But uh, these two options are actually time tested and uh, being practiced more widely. First option is ultrasound guided corticosteroid injection. And then second option is ultrasound guided percutaneous needle tenotomy with platelet rich plasma infiltration. Now for both these treatments ultrasound is must because the uh, injection area should be targeting the correct pain generator. So let us diagnose case of Achilles tendinopathy here. So we can see the bony spar. This is the bony spar area of calcaneal bony spar. Then we can see the insertional tendinopathy of this area also. Then retrocalcaneal bursa, this is some small amount of effusion is there. And this is the swelling of the Achilles tendon. This is the fusiform swelling of the Achilles tendon when, when inserting in the calcaneal bone. So this diagnosis of calcaneal bursitis is confirmed. Now. Uh, as uh, we are going for the treatment. So treatment depends on uh, the presentation. If it is a it is a, a acute presentation like this patient was acutely in pain. So uh, we, st we opted for steroid infiltration, peritendinous steroid infiltration and percutaneous needle tenotomy. Here what we are doing is percutaneous needle tenotomy. So in this treatment we sh uh, uh, um, uh, shall inject the tendon with a normal uh, 23 gauge needle 15 to 20 term, times uh, and which causes the percutaneous needle tenotomy. So you can see how this needle tenotomy is being done and it is at the hypoechoic area which we can see under ultrasound. So when needle tenotomy has been done, then uh, next step comes the peritendinous steroid infiltration. Here one important thing is steroid should not be inje injected inside the tendon. Inside the tendinous uh, tendon fibers, the steroid should not be infiltrated as it can uh, cause tendon rupture. So the peritendinous infiltration of steroid is being done here. We have not chosen the option of PRP here 
because the presentation was a acute presentation and patient was in acute pain so for a uh, early relief of patient's pain we chose the steroid as treatment but the steroid has been given peritendinously and uh, after the tenotomy has been done join asian pain academy to master the ultrasound which is related to the pain practice